The Grand Canyon, often dubbed the basement of history, has long enthralled those who marvel at one of Earth's most enigmatic natural wonders. Its origins trace back to the dawn of our planet, etching it as an extraordinary landmark within the United States of America. A mesmerizing tapestry of ancient red rocks, some dating back billions of years, forms its majestic walls, drawing inquisitive scientists and enchanted tourists alike to the heart of Arizona. Yet, as scientists probed deeper into the canyon's secrets, they unearthed a chilling revelation that would shatter our perceptions of this age-old abyss. Join us on an electrifying journey as we dig deep into the startling discoveries of these intrepid researchers and how they rewrite the narrative of the Grand Canyon. Discoveries Among the scientists' perplexing revelations lies a riddle that defies the fabric of time. The Grand Canyon appears to have lost a staggering billion years' worth of its geological history. How can one discern such an extraordinary temporal gap etched in the basement of Earth's narrative? The enigma unfurled when keen-eyed geologist John Wesley Powell embarked on a fateful journey along the Colorado River in 1896. Powell's astute observations were only the beginning. Many geologists stumbled upon an astonishing incongruity within the canyon's rocky tapestry in the ensuing years. Rocks that bore the weight of 1.4 to 1.8 billion years of existence stood in stark contrast to their neighbors, a mere 520 million years old. The question hung heavy. Where had the missing eons vanished to? As we plunge deeper into the depths of this geological enigma, the mysteries of the Grand Canyon's lost epic beckon, challenging our understanding of time itself. The missing rocks, perhaps swept away by ancient rivers or oceans, elude clear explanation. Geologists turn to thermochronology, measuring the heat within these rocks' birth for clues. Though not definitive, it hints at the passage of time. As the mystery endures, the world's finest minds strive to unravel it, even as the Colorado River's flow diminishes. Colorado River The Colorado River is one of the principal rivers in the southwestern United States and the north of Mexico. The 1,450-mile river flows through waterfalls, deserts, and canyons as it enters the Gulf of California. It is known to be the water source of about 40 million people. And if the river dried up, what would happen to these people? If something isn't done soon, environmentalists believe that we may regret not doing our best to preserve this body of water. Although some parts of the river are still complete, the river has shown signs of decrease around areas like the Lakes Edge District. As such, if the water levels continue to drop, several parts of the U.S. and Mexico will suffer from a lack of water. Environmentalists probably got so upset about the ever-decreasing amount of water in the Colorado River because they were reminded about a time when life thrived uninterruptedly. Footprints When evidence of prehistoric life forms was discovered in the Grand Canyon by a Norwegian geologist named Alan Krill, Every enthusiastic geologist was excited as it revealed that these were ancient fossilized footprints. They also believed that these footprints were 313 million years old, making them the oldest vertebrate footprints ever discovered in the Grand Canyon. Upon further investigation, these scientists speculated that these footprints may have belonged to an ancient hard-shelled egg-laying animal known as an amniotic. Roland believed that these footprints may have belonged to two separate animals. This adds a layer of excitement to the discovery, because this may mean that this sort of movement had developed a lot sooner in the history of the planet than was expected. Uranium. Prehistoric creatures in the Grand Canyon might be exciting to one set of people. Still, the discovery of uranium in the basement of history was even more exciting to another group of people in the Rocklands. The uranium found here has been determined to be of the minimum level, which means it isn't toxic to tourists. In the 50s, many mining companies and their crews proceeded to mine tons of uranium out of the Grand Canyon. Thanks for watching this video. Feel free to watch our next video to get your head on straight. Also, subscribe and click that bell icon to stay updated until the following video is uploaded. Until next time.